Hello, everyone. Um, real pleasure to be here. Um, what I want to share with you today is uh, my personal passion and the work that we've been doing about designing the future, which is what we call cybertecture. And specifically, the talk is called Innovating the Fabric of Mankind, because you are all agents of change. You are all affecting the fabric of mankind every day. And in many ways, the way in which we're going to make progress needs us to look forward in the way in which we're going to design and build this world. First of all, I think the most beautiful thing that's ever been conceived and built is our own planet. Our own planet is our mothership, our home, our shelter, and it's the one piece of giant infrastructure that contains all of us on this planet. And when we look from a satellite, looking down over this fabric that we've created, all of the specks of light that you see, that is part of the urbanized areas on this planet, have been created by man. And much of it has been created in the last two to three centuries, which is a very short of amount of time in this period. Created on this planet has been a collaboration of many, many, many people's expertise, the technology that we've created, and ultimately the sustaining of life on this planet. And all of that comes from engineering, from design, from management, and the vision of people who lead society in the research, in education, and also in the way in which we can plan our future for the long-term sustainability of mankind. Let's take a little step back. I think a lot of you were still born in the 20th century. I was born in the 20th century. Let's have a look at where we got to in the 20th century. This is what we got to. We built massive urbanized areas called cities out of concrete, steel, and glass. And that concrete, steel, and glass has really aged very, very quickly. That concrete, steel, and glass is getting very, very old. And we know that this substance, this fabric of mankind, is struggling to deal with the needs of our society. We need to get people around, so we built giant road networks. We've built giant infrastructure networks like railways to move the people around our planet because of the needs of society. And then we've had to power it. And the powering it question is the one that is confronting us with the most urgency. The need for us to transfer our basic uh, processes of fossil fuels into a sustainable system. Now, we are evolving in the 21st century, and we need to evolve into a 21st century city that really is a different type of machine. And when we look at uh, our city, our 20th century city, with a different set of eyes, if we look at it from upon high, from a satellite, it does look very, very similar to a microchip. And that microchip symbolizes the kind of society that we're in, the interconnectedness through technology, the need for information to flow and to interact with all bodies of society is one that we have to design. And that design is no longer the traditional buildings that we built, the traditional roads, but a new kind of simulated society that allows us all to reach our potential within the safety of managing ourselves. We see that already manifesting in things which are non-physical. Facebook, in many sense, is probably the biggest city in the world, containing all of the people, over 800 million people today, in a single city communicating with each other. And that same planet that we saw before, geographically from a satellite, can be re-symbolized and re-visualized as a matrix of those points of information that we are no longer building out of concrete, steel, and glass, but we're building out of the connections between all of us through technology. I call this moving towards a cyber texture ubiquitous city, where the city is no longer built on the old precepts of trying to power an old antiquated machine. One that, would be, um, one that would be collapsing upon itself because of the infrastructure not being able to sustain its life, not being able to cater for the growing population, not being able to deal with the information loads that we are now living in modern society. And then what we are moving now towards is a society which is much more cyclical, 
one which is connected as a system, what we call a U-city, a ubiquitous city, where smart systems join things together. But why must we build or design or even invent this infrastructure of the future? Why must we do it? Let's get really, really real on this. The planet is a finite resource. It only has finite amounts of material, finite amounts of space. But the global population is moving at such a rate that we are reaching way, way beyond our sustainable uh, area of, of, of living and resources on this planet. And we know that within a very short time, 50% of the world's population will be living in urbanized areas. And we are confronted with issues like this. People on this planet still today not having enough food to eat. The energy that we're using, almost 30% of the energy and embodied energy goes into infrastructure. And that is what we need every day. But that metamorphosic cycle is creating the, the, the pollution and the unmanageable cycles that is already affecting our daily lives. Nature has not been taken care of. We have gone against nature. We have built in areas which we don't respect anymore. Yet we try to overpower them. But there are going to be scales of problems, such as climate change, which you really will not be able to fight against. We are hearing about hurricanes that could blow over a whole skyscraper. Some soothsayers say by the year 2025 will be a tipping point, a point where we can no longer stop these changes. So our future is in our own hands. As designers and engineers, as innovators, we need to take these things on board and take it into our own hands to change. And I love this word, which a friend taught me. We are all imagineers, and we can design our own destiny. And I think a lot of the students here, this is going to be your roles in the future. So I want to highlight to you some of the kind of work that we've been doing, which we think is the kind of cyber texture that imagines the future and how we can actually improve people's lives in the city. Imagine the buildings that we design are no longer just concrete, steel, and glass. They're clever enough to do other things. This is a building that we are doing in Dubai at the moment. It's known as the world's most intelligent building. But at the heart of it, inside this building, in every space, technology is used to enhance people's lives. For example, in the bathroom, the mirror has been designed to be a health monitor so that the people inside the building can constantly have themselves uh, uh, checked, monitored, and also be taken care of. That kind of innovation opens up a lot of business potential, but also ultimately changes the fabric of mankind. If every person in the world, when they look in the mirror, can have their health monitored, have health advice, and be taken care of, what a change to the world we can make. And this is not a piece of fantasy. This is not a piece of science fiction. This is real. And we are manufacturing it at the moment. Imagine that the cities that we are living in now are getting a bit old. But we need to get more intelligent in managing them. So how do we do that? Well, we can take a city and we can inject into a city almost a new kind of uh, antibody, a new kind of uh, sensor network that we can impregnate into an urbanized area and make it intelligent. And these are another project that we're doing at the moment. They're called Cyber Texture Nodal Points. These are intelligent totem poles that we deploy around the city. They deliver information, but they also draw information from the city. So treating the city like a circuit board, we're able to uh, put these poles in, and they will talk to each other, and they will help to monitor everything from traffic to counting the number of people in that district, to monitoring the amount of energy loss in different areas, to deliver information to the public. And we, did, we put these totem poles into the 20th century city to try to make them into 20th century plus cities. We need to upgrade ourselves in order to deal with our urban, change, uh, urban challenges. And each pole can do many things. They can be part of the community or public affairs. They can be helping the police do surveillance. They can really do a lot for the city, garner the intelligence that our governments, our managers need in order to monitor the city. So this is the first real one that we've deployed here in Hong Kong. So 
our invention, our technology, our design can change the fabric that we are living in right now. We can make a difference. We can make a change. Now, I'm an architect by training. I've loved architecture since I was very small. One of the things that really gets me is like, why do we live in a world where our buildings are so boring? Why are we not designing our buildings in a much more powerful and energetic way, much more clever way? So here is an example of a project which we're, doing, we're building at the moment. It's called the Cybertecture Egg, and it's an office building unlike any other in the world. Now, some of the principles I talked about before, about designing things with courage, exist in this building. This building is the first building in the world that is supported without columns, an entire 50,000 square meter building that doesn't have any columns. The shape is one that has been derived through the computer, so it optimizes the shape of glass on top of it. But the building actually slants at a particular angle so that it actually takes the least amount of solar gain from the sun. It is almost like a seed pod from a plant naturally growing with its tip towards the sun in order to protect itself, but also get the energy from the sun. The skin of the glass is a new kind of glass where we've impregnated photovoltaic dots into the glass so that the whole building becomes almost like a photosynthesis kind of surface area, and we can generate energy for the people inside the building. Imagine buildings all over a city generating its own energy, talking to each other, sharing that energy. It really would be amazing. Introducing green spaces so that cities really start to become part of nature again. And then ultimately, a building which, which is really talking about the 21st century, which is talking about the ability for us to design beyond the 90 degree geometry. These are our human re renaissance in terms of design. These are the capacities and tools that we have. So let's take that to a much bigger scale. Let's call them planetary cities. Can you imagine that we now have the ability to design a whole planet? I believe we soon will have. And we can take a lot of inspiration if we design the new cities in the future, like the planet that we are on at the moment. So our planet is a beautiful mesh of many forces, many ecosystems, many layered processes that allows the balance of nature to be achieved. Tectonics, geothermics, resources being recycled. We are currently building the world's single largest spherical building. It's called the Technosphere, and it's a new model for urbanized design. An entire city is compressed into a single sphere. This sphere is like a mini planet. It breathes, it plays, it talks to the people, and it has all of the principles of geometry and mass production that allows a building of this scale, which is over 10 million square feet, to give you a sense of the size, that's almost six and a half ICC towers all together in one building. It has residences, offices, convention centers, museums, cultural facilities, and every piece of glass, every piece of steel in this building is unitized so that it is um, repeated in a factory and built in a very, very low cost and a very high speed. But the beauty behind nature and the beauty behind geometrical design is that this building actually is made, out, it's made from a sphere so that it actually uses the least amount of surface area per volume ratio possible. So that's a basic piece of you know, primary school mathematics. And that's what the world needs. We don't need to go around building individual buildings anymore. We need to start to look at the collective society and build megastructures that would be more efficient. At the heart of this building, actually, is a um, giant valley that actually is naturally ventilated. At the heart of that valley is where the soul of the building resides, which is the water of the whole building. So this building uses over 10 cubic million meters of water a year, and 80% of it is recycled through a river inside. So once the slide gets there, we'll see it. So this is the giant valley inside. At the bottom of this valley is a man-made river that is used for recycling and cleaning the water that is used in this giant complex. It reminds us 
about the essence of life. That water and all of the politics and the, and the value of water is right at the heart of society. And we all used to live in that way when we were in villages, in valleys, in, in the countryside. We valued our water source. So here, the water is symbolized in this giant river. And it is the one, is, this is the water, the resource that is uh, reused in the building. And then this giant valley space is the protective space of the community. One which is where the people gather together, share activities, share their lives. There are museums, there are restaurants, there are bars, there are exhibitions, all happening in this valley. And right at the heart of it is this silver, silver egg. And this egg is where the uh, cinema and auditorium for the whole complex is. And this is where people can gather for special events, TED Talks, etc., etc., in the middle there. Um, at the top of the building is the world's largest um, solar farm on the building. And on the skin of the building, it mirrors what we have on our planet, which is that on the southern and western sides of this giant structure, uh, we actually re-mimic the tropical zones of our own planet by creating giant sky rainforests. Each of these rainforests have a continental approach. So we transplant plants from different parts of the world and wildlife from different parts of the world to this building so that we create a kind of miniaturized geography of our planet onto this building. Now, these sky gardens, they will create life. They will um, recycle the uh, oxygen. They'll keep the building cool. But they'll also be great kind of um, retreats for the people inside the building so that they are in touch with nature in a way that probably they never had the chance to. Through design, through engineering, through vision, we can achieve those things. So what I'd like to end up with is that we are all on the same mothership. Our lives on this mothership has responsibilities. Each of you have talents which can contribute to the development of this mothership. Our future is in our own hands. Thank you very much.